Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. We have the picture of the pursuit. Sammy's ready to sell he's gonna kill somebody. Oh! We got him, we got him. They're down in the ditch. Here. Look around. He's wrecked, he's wrecked. No matter where you are, at any second, oh, oh. it could happen to you. Oh man, you need some help. Because desperate criminals use desperate measures, no matter who gets in the way. For the next 60 minutes, you'll get a close-up view of what officers see every day. You'll ride shotgun in the most terrifying chases on the road. You'll feel the heat of the most explosive acts of criminal insanity ever captured on tape. Much of this footage has never been viewed by the public. Police and news agencies send us their most shocking videos. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. So that you can know what they know. That to let your guard down, even for an instant, it in could mean disaster. He's gonna run the red light, he's gonna run it. So crank up your TV and don't turn away because real life happens in the blink of an eye. Shut your truck off. Sheriff John Bunnell. I've been at hundreds of crime scenes, and still, I'm often surprised and shocked by what I see. It's here that police officers first encounter the costs in terms of destruction, pain, and human suffering. Some of the police videos we bring you in the next hour are going to be shocking. We bring these to you because we want you to see for yourself. Los Angeles, California. Police pursue three gang members in a stolen vehicle. Some of the witnesses on scene have reported that there have been shots fired. Recently involved in a drive-by shooting, the suspects may still be armed. Now they're driving 80 miles an hour on one of the busiest freeways in Los Angeles, going the wrong way. At least 80 miles an hour right now. You just better hope that the other drivers see him. On the other side of the freeway, an officer tries to warn passing drivers. But with the railway track in the middle, they can't see him. Units in pursuit, very dangerous situation. The pursuing officers cannot get ahead of the suspects. They search desperately for a way to bring this nightmare to an end. But they can only watch helplessly as the inevitable happens. Oh no, oh God, a major collision here, head-on crash in the carpool lane. That looked horrible. The suspects smash into an innocent driver at a combined force of 150 miles an hour. Police don't know how anyone could have survived this carnage. Officers surround the suspect vehicle cautiously. Other officers check the victim's car for survivors. Incredibly, the driver and three passengers are still alive. Against all odds, they came through with only minor injuries. All three suspects are also still alive, but trapped in the twisted wreck. Moments ago, the driver was desperately trying to get away from the cops. Now he is pleading with them to save his life. That person is very lucky to be alive right now. There we go, that person is lucky to be alive. The gangsters gambled with death and with the lives of innocent people. At least 80 miles an hour right now. Miraculously, everyone survived. But for the gang members, it was out of the jaws of death and into the arms of the law. San Antonio, Texas. A county sheriff is in a slow speed pursuit of a probable DUI and his drinking buddy. Driving real radically. Noticing that the car is slowing down, the sheriff assumes that they are ready to pull over. The accident, they're taking the exit. But they continue down a residential street, driving like they're the only ones on the road. South Palmetto, we're going southbound. Then, in a ridiculous attempt to rid themselves of the evidence, the passenger tosses a beer out of the car. 
One down, five to go, except for one small thing. Okay, stay at 1050 Major, 1050 Major. The passenger may have thought he was outwitting the officer, but his arm is nearly crushed in the resulting collision. When these drunks saw the flashing lights of the police cruiser, they made a shoddy attempt to destroy proof that they had been drinking. But the resulting accident was all the proof officers needed. Anaheim, California. An hour ago, the driver of this pickup stabbed a security guard at a supermarket. Now ground and air units have mobilized to find him and bring him in. He's going about 60 miles an hour and he shows no signs of giving up. Armed with a knife and wanted for assault, this violent criminal figures he has nothing to lose. He's had a few close calls and he continues to swerve around traffic. After the driver suddenly exits the freeway, he surprises officers by jumping right back on. Okay, he's making a sharp turn and going onto the freeway again. Officers are following. The chase is headed westbound on the 91. Police hang back, not knowing what kind of move this guy might pull next. Moments later, the suspect starts to pull over. It looks like he might be having a moment of clarity, but he's actually about to do something completely insane. Okay, the truck is slowing down. It looks like it's gonna stop, and he's he's bailing out. He's on foot, and he's running right into oncoming traffic. The man realizes he can't outdrive the cruisers, so he vaults the divider and charges on foot into opposing lanes. The police are scrambling, trying to figure out how to stop this guy and how to warn oncoming cars. It's like a deadly bullfight with oncoming traffic. It would only take one unsuspecting driver to bring his flight to a bone-crushing end. The officers behind him pursue on foot, fearing the suspect could use his knife to take a hostage. Suddenly, the man spots units approaching from ahead. He's surrounded. He's got police coming at him from all sides. With nowhere left to go, this once defiant suspect becomes the picture of defeat. He's surrendering. He's down on the ground and officers are moving in. This knife-wielding criminal thought he had nothing to lose. He shows no signs of giving up. But when he went running kamikaze into oncoming traffic... He's on foot and he's running right into oncoming traffic. He realized he'd rather give up his freedom... He's down on the ground and officers are moving in. ...than give up his life. Coming up on Police Video, frenzied felons go wild. Drunk drivers take the plunge. And rampant robbers take a dive. When criminals go berserk, no one is safe. Next. Dealing with someone who has a mental illness can be difficult for an officer. How do you react to somebody who may not know what they're doing? Boone County, Kentucky. The woman in this car has been harassing and stalking other drivers for over an hour. Officers hope that a little roadside talk will cool her road rage. But when they ask her a simple question... I see your license and proof of insurance on the vehicle, please. She takes off. As the pursuit slows to a crawl across the icy countryside, the officers learn why the woman has been so irrational. She's a diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic. Under treatment, she's a functioning member of society. But against doctor's orders, she stopped taking her medication. Now, she's being driven by an urge to flee that even she doesn't understand. For her own safety, the officers can't let her go. But the more they chase her, the more erratically she responds. She reaches the end of the pavement, but just won't stop. She turns around, ramming one of the patrol cars in the process. As she drives back the way she came, officers behind the pursuit are now in front, ready with stop sticks. With her car disabled and stuck in the slush, the woman can't go any farther. 
Officers rush in with guns drawn, attempting to make the arrest. Get your hands up! Get your hands up! Come on! But in the woman's state of mind, surrender is not an option. She suddenly charges them, hand jammed in her purse, aiming what could be a concealed weapon. It would only take one shot to stop her. But in a split-second decision, they spare her life. Freeze! 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 And the deluded woman takes off in one of their cruisers. The frustrated officers watch helplessly as the chase starts all over again. Additional units quickly respond. They strike, spiking and crippling the stolen squad car. With nowhere left to run, the woman finally gives up. Officers take her into custody, but most importantly, they take her in alive. People with mental illness may become unpredictable or even dangerous. This woman may not have been armed, but she presented herself as a deadly threat. She could have been killed. But thanks to the restraint of the officers, all she got was two flat tires, two years probation, and proper medication. Officers have to be prepared for action every second of their shift because they never know when trouble's gonna head their way. Muskegon, Michigan. It's a quiet night on the beat for Officer Mike Tripp, when suddenly a station wagon charges by at 70 miles per hour. Making a pretty good time. Huh? Officer Jerry Steffens already has her cruiser in pursuit. The suspect makes a breakneck turn. Darting onto residential streets, he continues trying to evade the officers. Officer Steffens calls in the plates. Registration of Robert King Davis. The suspect is a parolee driving with a suspended license. He knows that if he's caught, he's going down for a long time. It's going about 70 miles an hour east on that lake. The maniac almost hits an innocent motorist pulling into a driveway. At these speeds, the risk to the public is just too great. The watch commander tells his officers to break off the pursuit. Steffens is clearly disappointed as she responds to the order. And the suspect slips out of reach. They're forced to give up, for now. But they know the suspect is still out there, and still running. Minutes later, the call goes out. Northbound, northbound Madison. For some reason, the suspect has doubled back and is heading straight for Officer Tripp. The officer lunges forward to block the speeding wagon. He just ran me. The suspect dodges another roadblock, then pushes his luck one too many times. A backup officer with a second dash cam arrives just as the suspect spins out. And Officer Tripp moves in quickly to pin the suspect against a tree. Even now, he tries to pull out. But the backup unit wedges him in. The Taurus is trapped. The suspect drops his hands in defeat. His running days are over. This habitual offender tore through a peaceful neighborhood and had gotten away dead to rights. But old habits die hard, and he came back for more. Now this repeat offender's bad habit have finally been put to rest. Pickens County, South Carolina. When a high-speed chase is underway, police never know how it's going to end. Officers are racing ahead to intercept a car thief who refused to stop for a speeding ticket. That was two and a half hours ago. Since then, the chase has gone through three counties. Dispatch informs the officers that the suspect is heading their way. One unit blocks the intersection, 
while the other two hammer down the road. Okay, here we go. The suspect swerved, hoping to dodge the roadblock. Walk him in here, walk him in. All it took was one wheel up the embankment to flip this sporty ride like a pancake. Police didn't know when or if they would finally nail this guy. The officer's roadblock proved more effective than they bargained for. Okay, here we go. And brought this wild chase to an extraordinary end. Walk him in here, walk him in. Rock Wall, Texas. This high-powered Trans Am is one of the fastest cars on the road. But when Officer Hank Havens clocks it doing a suspiciously slow 40 miles per hour, he pulls the car over. For no apparent reason, the passenger makes a run for it. 19, I got one running. Officer Havens has to make a decision, and fast. He goes after the passenger. Running southbound, carrying a large bag. And quickly calls for backup on the driver. The vehicle's on the move. It's a Trans Am black. Running on foot, the suspect has no chance of escaping from an officer in a patrol car. Get on the ground now! Back on the interstate, another officer nails the driver who has fled the scene of the crime. It takes a show of force. But the speeding suspect eventually pulls over. I got him stopped. The officers fear that the driver may be a loose cannon, just like his buddy. They take extreme precaution, but the fugitive surrenders without incident. Like a deer caught in the headlights, the suspect doesn't dare move or resist the police. You got one in custody. But there is still something that the officers are dying to know. Somebody jumped out of your car and you didn't know if you had to wait? No, sir. They aren't fooled by the crook's attempt to play dumb. Back at the scene of the crime, Officer Havens completes a successful arrest, yielding an impressive interception of contraband. Over three and a half pounds of marijuana. When this pair of criminals decided to split up and run in separate directions, 19, I got one running. They were sure that at least one of them would get away. But thanks to these officers' instinctive response to a tricky situation, and a police force well versed in the wily ways of drug runners, this narcotics transport scheme was brought to an abrupt end. Coming up on police videos, the criminals know no boundaries. The crimes know no limits. From the burning streets of the nation's capital to the rickety roads of the country's backwoods. We're approaching speeds of 100. Officers go everywhere. The crooks dare to tread. Next. Police cruisers are designed to catch crooks on the highway. So they can be at a disadvantage when you go off-road uh, and you're chasing a four-wheel drive or cars that are designed for that kind of terrain. Gordon County, Georgia. Sergeant R.L. Minter is in pursuit of this speeding pickup. The officer can't get ahead on these narrow country roads. The suspect turns on to a back route. His truck easily navigates the unpaved road, kicking dirt in the officer's face. Then the pursuit encounters a series of bone-jarring potholes. The cruiser can hardly keep up. But as bad as this is, it's about to get much worse. They approach the one thing that's sure to ruin any officer's day, a deep creek. But the sergeant goes for it. 120 Gordon, I drowned it out. The truck's high carriage was easily able to clear the creek. Unfortunately, the cruiser wasn't built for cross country pursuits. The only way to get to come out is there's no fault the road. An off road situation with a truck isn't the only place that an officer can find himself at a disadvantage in a chase. For flat out speed, there's nothing like a high powered motorcycle. Lumpkin County, Georgia. 
Deputy Walter Pyle is chasing a motorcyclist speeding over 100 miles an hour. When the biker makes a turn, Deputy Pyle is able to catch up, but only for a moment. His cruiser is no match for the motorbike's acceleration, and it isn't long before Deputy Pyle has lost him. Driver is going to be wearing a black leather jacket, white boot jeans, and a white black helmet. The officer does a quick canvas of witnesses in the area. Hey, did you just have a motorcycle blow past you? Yeah. Deputy Pyle finally spots the bike ditched in the weeds off the side of the highway. Entry. Unknown. Trying to find driver. A few minutes later, the deputy finds his man, who tries to weasel out by feigning ignorance. I didn't even know you were back there. Where'd you get behind me? I'm pretty sure you knew I was behind you. I swear I didn't know you were behind me. Then why would you ditch your bike right here? Well, I didn't ditch it. I put it on. Cat, hold on. The suspect's excuses become increasingly feeble. If you look, you'll see I've only got one mirror on that bike, and it don't work. But anyway, hold on. I want you, I want you to come over here for something. The deputy proves his point. Why don't you listen to this woman? This is my siren. Tell me you couldn't hear that. The biker's excuse cuts no ice. Pyle takes him in and books him. A suspect's vehicle may be big and powerful, or it may be small and fast. But no matter where a suspect runs, an officer will do what it takes to bring him in. I didn't know you were behind. Washington, D.C. Only two miles from the White House, store owners prepare for another night of civil unrest. During a standoff several days ago, a Hispanic man was shot by a local officer. Now Latin immigrants converge on the city to protest. But it quickly leads to rioting. Night turns to day, and the commotion rages on. This is the most serious disturbance that I can remember since the 68 riots. Officers try to get the protest under control, but are met with harsh resistance. The public stands divided as they search for answers. It's the living conditions, and they're not being treated with respect by the government here, and they're also not being treated with respect. respect, a, uh, a threshold well, for rioting, for burning oh, no, property, for threatening policemen's lives, was, for threatening innocent people's lives. And, la and what happened on Sunday night was a person lunged at a police officer with a knife, and that person was shot. That's called law and order. Eventually, justification for the riot expands to include all immigrant concerns. If we don't speak English, they uh, lure us as dumb and stupid and retarded. They deny us education, they deny us job, the le legitimate right to work as an honest people that we are. They came to protest a violent event, but they did it with more violence. Once that cycle starts, everyone loses. When the right to free speech gets out of hand and infringes on someone else's right to live peacefully, that's where freedom of expression ends and anarchy begins. A criminal who has done jail time will do anything to avoid going back. An ex-con will run from police for even the slightest offense, and he doesn't care what stands in his way. Moundsville, West Virginia. Marshall County Sheriff's deputies pursue a man running for reasons unknown. In pursuit of a beige Nissan, Moments ago, deputies tried to stop the suspect to tell him his headlights were out. A quick warning would have sent him on his way. Now, officers are involved in a chase topping 100 miles an hour. All units, you see the County Road 21. It turns out the man is driving on a suspended license, a misdemeanor in most states. But the suspect is also a recent parolee, and the fear of going back to jail fuels his mad dash. Radio, you got anything on those plates yet? Negative, County. The suspect drives straight down the center line, treating both lanes as one. He just misses oncoming traffic time and time again. This is getting real dangerous, babe. 
at speeds this fast, defensive driving is impossible. It seems he won't stop for anything, and apparently he's proven that before. All units, that vehicle has a prior 1080. Only two weeks ago, the suspect was involved in another chase in which he got away. These deputies aren't about to let that happen again. Base, I'd like permission to terminate this flight. The sheriff gives the go-ahead. That's a go, you have to terminate at will. Officers act swiftly. As the man turns right, deputies punch his back bumper. His car skids out of control, hits an embankment, and flips onto its roof. Before he can even think about running again, the suspect is cuffed and taken away. His original crime of driving with a suspended license would have earned him at most two nights in jail. But running from police All units, the county road 21. and endangering lives will earn him several, 19 months worth to be exact. Still to come on police videos. What is wrong with this guy? Cocky crooks meet their match. <laughs> Some lose their cool. Some lose their stash. And some even lose their pants. They're fast and loose felons in the fight of their lives. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The best way to catch a crook is to anticipate his plan and stay one step ahead of him. But every now and then, the police encounter a suspect whose motives seem to defy logic. Van Nuys, California. A police helicopter is in pursuit of this suspected drunk driver. Right now, the suspect is heading north. Police prepare for the suspect to make a run, but he doesn't flee. He turns around. We don't know what this guy's up to. Could be a DUI. The officers hold back until they can determine what he wants. Three pedestrians approach the car. They seem to know him. Well, now civilians are talking to him. There's some sort of exchange going on. But suddenly a scuffle breaks out. One of the pedestrians snatches for the keys. The driver yells and pushes him away. Then the suspect takes off again. He circles the neighborhood. What is wrong with this guy? Officers continue to hold back. He may simply be angry from the conflict with the pedestrians, or he may be under the influence. But when the police helicopter swoops overhead, the driver looks up and waves. Is he trying to signal right now or just showing off? Officers decide to shut him down. But when they move in for the pit, he evades the maneuver with a U-turn. Oh, that was narrowly a collision. Did you see that? That's when officers noticed the cameraman at the side of the road. Apparently, this guy was only evading police so he could see himself on the nightly news. So the officers move in and shut this show off down. They're boxing him in. Get your hands up! Do not move! Do not move! Within seconds, police have their man out of the car and under arrest. That's it. That's it, code four, this pursuit is over. Apparently, all this suspect wanted was to be the center of attention. Is he trying to signal right now or just showing off? He got his 15 minutes of fame and several months behind bars. Get your hands up! Get your hands up! Do not move! Memphis, Tennessee, New Year's Eve. Police have joined a hot pursuit of a stolen vehicle. They are following a pair of car thieves, taking a year-end joyride across two counties. The driver handles the bulky luxury automobile as if it were a sports car. The vehicle slips and slides as it exits the interstate. Come on, need to get this guy off the road. He's, he's all over the road. Fearful of starting off the new year in prison, the driver floors it down a straightaway. The fugitive gains on the traffic ahead. He swerves to avoid a compact car and suddenly spirals out of control. Get out, get out. Remarkably, he recovers without missing a beat. It seems to be this guy's lucky day, except for one small problem. The crooks take off on foot, 
but their fleeting moment of good fortune ends when police make their arrest. Shelbyville, Tennessee, where another crook seems to be having some good luck. Officers approach a housing project to apprehend a parole violator. But someone's tipped him off, and he's not in his room. One officer, wanting to leave no stone unturned, searches the parking lot in his cruiser. When suddenly, the suspect comes barreling out from behind a wall and straight under the hood of the patrol car. Stop, please! Had he stayed hidden, officers might have missed him completely. But this fugitive decided to run. I got him! Got him! Until his luck ran out. Warner Robbins, Georgia. An officer pulls a man over for driving erratically. The reason I stopped him, you riding all over the yellow line. Adhering to strict procedure, the officer asks the driver if he's willing to prove he's sober. You mind taking a couple of field sobriety tests for me? But the officer notices something in the driver's pocket. You got no weapon, nothing like that, dude. No. It turns out that the man is carrying three ounces of pure cocaine. What you got in your pocket here? And he doesn't want to give it up without a fight. Even with two officers on him, the suspect breaks free. He runs away wearing only his boxers. This guy may have gotten a lucky break in making his temporary escape, but he wasn't able to last for long in the wilderness in nothing but his underwear. We got him. When a person makes the decision to break the law, it is at best a crapshoot. But one should always remember the golden rule of gambling. I got a big now. The odds always favor the house. I got it, got it. Just ahead on police videos when crooks won't take the hint. Just past the county line, still pursuit. Cops have to get tough. Hard charging criminals meet hard hitting police. Next. Every day, millions of dollars worth of drugs travel our nation's highways. Police keep a watchful eye on these high volume thoroughfares, and you'd be surprised at some of the things they see. Memphis, Tennessee. Detective Michael McCord stops a vehicle, which he thinks belongs to a local drug runner. This might be them. The officer has the driver stand behind the car while he asks some simple questions. Who's vehicle? But as easy as the questions are, the officer notices the driver stumbling for answers. Where y'all coming from with it? We're just coming from a Pena or something like that. Lepanta? Lepanta, Arkansas? This only increases Detective McCord's suspicion. He separates the driver from his companion. All right, have a seat right rear for me if you would. The officer then asks the passenger the very same questions. Where y'all coming from, bud? Uh, we just come from Arkansas. What part of Arkansas? Uh, Atlanta. The suspect's stories don't match. And the more they lie, the more they incriminate themselves. How come you're nervous, man? When the detective asks permission to search the car, the passenger gets even more defensive. Officer McCord first searches the passenger, but the suspect is anything but cooperative. Okay, keep your hand out of your pocket. Sure enough, the officer finds the suspect carrying contraband. Plastic bag, what's it got in? Weed. He now has probable cause to search the vehicle. Uh, turn around, put your hands on that car. Do it now. Once inside the car, the officer discovers much more than he was expecting. Well, about a quarter ounce of methamphetamine. While the two suspects watch helplessly from the back seat of the police car, the officer places evidence on the hood. He's discovered an entire portable lab used for making methamphetamine. Pseudoephedrine tablets, butane fuel. I'm assuming this, this is where they probably get their ether from. 
Meanwhile, in the squad car, the suspects have plenty of time to contemplate the consequences of their actions. We go in town and play the car. We have a car. I don't know how in the world I'll get out of jail. The contraband keeps piling up on the hood. More than likely, it's going to be a lab. And it's more than enough for this officer to make an arrest. Time in jail. Even after all the evidence found in their possession. So about a quarter ounce of methamphetamine. And after all the evidence found in their car. These are pseudo ephedrine tablets, butane fuel. These guys still tried to squeeze their way out of a tight situation with one final lie. Oh, but that, we did find a big story. Livonia, Michigan. A convenience store surveillance camera captures an armed robbery in progress. Oh, I was just held up. Do you have a gun or we got a rifle? Officers respond to the 911 call. Within minutes, they spot his getaway vehicle. A white van heading northbound. Now, every cop in the neighborhood prepares to assist in a felony arrest. Copy all units, Mike Simon. The suspect immediately accelerates down the rain slicked asphalt. The officers know he's armed. They decide to ram him off the road as quickly as possible. The lead unit confirms the command by the book. The officer executes the order before the suspect can react. The precise attack jams the robber into a light pole. The getaway van is immobilized. The officers immediately charge in and make the arrest. That's when they make a surprising discovery. This suspect held up the store with a BB gun, but it makes no difference. Armed robbery, even with a toy gun, is still a felony. And officers approach all felonies by the book. Coming up on police videos. For one crazed car thief, there's no path too dangerous, no gap too small, and no risk too great. Next. When the decision has been made to stop a fleeing subject, an officer hopes he has three things going for him. An open road, the faster car, and backup on hand in case something goes wrong. Camden County, Georgia. At least four hours have passed since this suspected car thief left Gainesville, Florida. But he's just crossed the state line where heavy traffic, highway construction, and Officer Dan Jenkins are giving him no slack at all. The crook has had the bad luck to steal a police officer's personal vehicle. And the order goes out to stop the marauding bandit. As traffic thickens, the suspect dodges in and out between cars. Repeat your traffic, 11. Using the only avenue available, the rutted, bone-jarring median. Construction work keeps Jenkins from making any effective maneuvers. So the officer gives the suspect a nudge, warning him in no uncertain terms to pull over. The suspect guns it, telling both Jenkins and civilian drivers to back off. But heavy traffic isn't the officer's only problem. Is anybody in this area? I need some help. Although Georgia state troopers are on the way, Jenkins is alone at this time. For the moment, he needs to wait. The suspect once again surges into the median, kicking dirt in the officer's face. Jenkins hangs tough. The suspect speeds back onto the asphalt, cutting off a five-ton tanker truck. The trucker somehow manages to hold the road, but the suspect is forced into the median once more. Suspect in heavy traffic, he's in a to fire to pass. Back on the asphalt, the fugitive blocks and dodges around bigger and slower drivers. 
but the suspect's agility takes him right out of traffic. On an open stretch of highway, Jenkins sees the opportunity to end this chase, if he can close the distance. Backup is still far away, but the officer tries gaining on the suspect. The fugitive prods his pistons for more speed. Catching up to larger vehicles, the suspect takes the advantage again, placing an ever-widening distance between himself and the officer. But as Jenkins catches up, he hears some good news. With a trooper coming up behind him and another waiting ahead, Jenkins finally has assistance. But the suspect tries to bury himself in traffic again, and Jenkins can't afford to take any risky chances. The suspect cuts left. Jenkins shoots for the breakdown lane. The decision is nearly disastrous. Trapped between a semi and the guardrail, a driver pulling over blocks his only escape route. But Jenkins squeezes out, tailing the suspect with backup on hand. The trooper boxes the suspect in behind a civilian, and Jenkins moves in for the pit. Jenkins managed to attain the right speed. He also had backup, and the lone civilian driver was ahead, out of danger. So Jenkins took the calculated risk. The driver fishtails but recovers. And the civilian moves quickly out of the suspect's way. Jenkins pushes forward, but his car won't respond. Moments earlier, when Jenkins entered the bridge, he hit road debris. The mishap punctured his tire and bent the rim. Now, with his shredded tire whapping beneath him, Jenkins struggles to keep up with the high-tailing marauder. He forces the suspect into the median. The bumpy terrain slows the crook down, giving Jenkins the perfect opportunity. The median had been the suspect's escape route, but it now becomes his downfall. A backup unit catches the hit. Here he comes, y'all! And the suspect skidding across the freeway. The stolen vehicle eventually comes to rest. Skid marks and deep ruts in the pavement mark the spot. The fugitive flees on foot, but with three officers behind him, he doesn't stand a chance. That's him right there. When this suspect took an officer's private automobile across the state line, he may have had the advantages of a congested road, a fast ride, and only one cop on his tail. But that lone officer took up the challenge, calculated the odds, and showed this car thief you just don't do such things down in Georgia. Only five months after this pursuit, during a traffic stop, Sergeant Dan Jenkins was shot and killed in the line of duty. In the dead of the night, in the glare of the day, from the heart of the city to the outermost country, no matter where criminals strike, no matter where they run, police are on the trail. Leaving crooks with nowhere to hide. Oh.